Okay, today we're going to try and tell a story in the woods. It's the first time we've told a story, so hopefully it'll go all right. Give it a go. So today's story is to do with springtime. So in the springtime, the birds start building their nests. So what I want to do is tell you an old English fairy tale, really, about how the birds came to build their nests. And it's called Magpie's Nest. So a long, long time ago, birds didn't used to have a nest. They used to lay their eggs all over the place. They would lay them under boulders. They would balance them in the tops of the trees. And they might even lay them on the edge of the cliff. And of course, at that point, not many birds survived. So the magpie thought, and he thought, and he thought, there must be a better way of doing this. So he decided to pick up a few branches. So he took some branches from the forest floor and he flew them up to the top of the tree and he started to lay them down all in the tree, all in the branches. And he laid them down and he made a nest shape in the branches, all out of twigs. And he looked and he sat in his nest and he thought, this isn't very comfortable. All these sticks are poking me in the bottom. I don't like this. So he flew away and he didn't use his nest. But the crow was watching and the crow looked and thought, oh, that looks like a good idea. And so the crow flew down onto the mess of sticks that were in the tree and the crow sat on the nest and thought oh this is the nest for me I'm going to use this nest and so the crow uses the sticks of the, of the magpie as his nest and he always has done and that's what he uses as his nest now the crow didn't want to give up so the crow thought hmm, I wonder what I could use to make my nest a little bit softer so he took his sticks again, this time they were a little bit smaller. So he took some smaller sticks and he started weaving smaller sticks together. And once he'd woven them all together again, he took some mud and he got the mud from the riverbed and he put it all inside the sticks. He put it all inside the sticks. And then he landed in the middle of it and he went gloop and all the mud splattered everywhere and went all over his beautiful feathers. Oh, he said, this isn't the nest for me. Oh, no. So off he flew out again. But the song thrush had been watching. And the song thrush looked at the nest and thought, oh, I could do something with this. So the song thrush jumped in the nest and she started using her body and turned around in the nest. And she used her body to make the mud all nice and smooth. So the nest was all beautiful and smooth inside. And so to this day, the song thrush uses, song thrush uses sticks and mud to make her nest. Now, the magpie still didn't give up. And he went off and he looked for some even softer materials. So he went and he found some even smaller twigs and grasses, bits and pieces, and even smaller twigs and grasses. And he wove and he wove and he wove his nest. He wove and he wove. And he took some mud and he put the mud in as well and then he picked some moss off the trees and he picked the moss, the moss, the moss and he put the moss into his nest and he thought oh this is nice and soft and he got into the nest but he got in and he made it far too small so he wiggled and he wiggled and his tail got in the way and he wasn't at all happy so he flew out and he said this isn't the nest for me. But a blackbird was watching and the blackbird looked and thought, oh, I could use that nest. So the blackbird got in and again, she used her big tummy and she rolled and rolled and rolled until the nest was perfect for her. And to this day, that is the nest that the blackbird uses. But the, black, but the magpie didn't give up. The magpie carried on and thought, Oh, hang on a minute, I'm going to make a really big nest. 
last. That one was too small and now I'm going to go really big. So the magpie got some really big sticks. He started to make his nest out of really big sticks and he put them all down in the tree. Really big sticks they were. And he was really pleased. He thought, oh yes, this is going to be good for me. So he jumped into his nest, but he jumped in one side and the sticks pinged up on the other side. And then he jumped onto the other side and the sticks pinged up on the other side again. Oh, this isn't the nest for me, he said. And off he flew. But there was an owl watching. And an owl likes to use things that are already made. So the owl jumped into the nest and thought, oh, this is just perfect for me. And so some owls will use big sticks as their nests. But the magpie still didn't give up. And the magpie thought, oh, do you know what? It started to rain. The magpie thought, oh no, it's raining. Oh, I know what I haven't done. I haven't made a nest with a roof over the top of me yet. So the magpie decided to make a nest with a roof. So he made a bottom bit and he made a top bit and he made made a big nest with a roof on top of it and it was a nice big nest but then when he'd made his big cone shaped nest and he'd made a little hole in the side of it he got in and again it was too small for him and he couldn't put his tail anywhere he didn't know whether to go up or down or left or right and it was all a bit too squashed in there so out he popped again oh it's not the nest for me he said but then a long-tailed tit had been watching and the long-tailed tit hopped into the nest because the long-tailed tit was much smaller than the magpie. So the long-tailed tit hopped into the nest, wiggled about and enjoyed having a roof over her head. And she to this day uses a nest with a roof over her head. And the magpie still wasn't happy. And the magpie is still today trying to find his perfect nest and you'll find that the magpie uses whatever material he can. He might use bits of wool, he might use bits of moss, he might even use a bit of old material that he finds. But he does gather up all of the jewels that he finds and sometimes he makes a big conical nest with a hole in it, sometimes he makes it out of big sticks. Um, but mostly he does have a hole in the side where he comes in because he quite liked that idea of having a little hole in the side. But the magpie still hasn't made up his mind and so his nests are all very 